Hello, welcome to this uh, video um, on this uh, video I'm going to continue with the data search work uh, part of the flowchart um, <clears throat> I'll be explaining uh, the network layout to have a website mail server web crawlers proxy servers uh, a gener the general and a somewhat detailed view of the network uh, drives um, and all that server setups that I have in order to support my efforts in data collection. Um, so the overview on this video, I'll be introdu introducing the challenge that I had and then I'll be talking about the network uh, layouts as well and some of the applications and excuse me and application servers um, that I use in order to help me uh, with some of this uh, data collection <clears throat> so on my previous video so I was discussing that I had a web crawler crawling all these images and stuff as the one data source, source uh, method of, of collecting images and I'm going to take that as an example in a snippet and you can look at these images in more detail as you can see that some of the images are inside some images are outside some of the images are in, on the ground some are during events um, so the introduction of, of the challenge that I have for this particular project is how am I going to get real time or close to real time either video or images for this project <clears throat> and is it is it going to be on mobile devices is it going to be in camera devices or are these these people are going to uh, give me USB sticks that I can get these images from them or, or they can email them to me and I will just extract the images from the emails so all, all of those methods that I was thinking to myself and, and brainstorming I came about to the network that I have set up and laid out and that's what I'm going to describe to you guys <clears throat> so at a high level overview, we're going to have some, of course, we're going to have the router, the internet router, where, you know, you guys can substitute whatever you have. I have cable here, cable services. Uh, I'm going to have some kind of web services uh, to people to, to interface with, even myself or others, such as subscribers that would like to subscribe and support me in my, in my projects. And uh, and then also have the ability to send and, and receive email. This is not necessarily for me and my projects it tends to be maybe sensitive. It might be projects that you guys work on might be sensitive in nature. So you may want to set up your own email servers where you only can send email to yourself or even even use the email server as a message messaging system to let's say your uh, mobile device so when your scripts are running in the background and they're done you get notified that hey I'm done you get an email notification and then you can go and interact with it using the web server anyways uh, I'll have a series of databases um, and then I had already mentioned that I'll have some web crawlers and I will go into details about the proxy itself um, and then <coughs> and hosting all this media I chose not to have a media server instead I opt to go the cheapo route because media servers tend to be very expensive and I, I just opt to get external USB drives and since I'm already using Windows as the operating system it's easier for me just to share across the network um, of course, I have specifically a laptop that runs nothing but machine learning. Um, and then I have a workstation where I do all my development. So this, you know, I highlight this is for all, this is the devices that I have. So these are hardware. 
As far as the applications and application servers, uh, I do use Exam. And the reason why I use Exam, they have a nice package way of giving the key applications that I do use. Uh, I have other ones that I have not mentioned here, but the primary ones that I do use is Apache, Maria Database, it used to be MySQL, but now it's MariaDB, which is a spinoff of MySQL and PHP. It does have Perl, I used Perl before, uh, but I'm gonna have to give up on it and then focus more on Python uh, because uh, my focus right now is on machine learning and computer vision. So Examp, I'll be going into details how I set up the Examp, how the Apache database, all that is configured, uh, the web apps that I load the, in there and all that stuff. The proxy server itself, I use Wingate. I'll go into details why I have a proxy and um, if you don't know what a proxy server is, you can search it up. There's there's several topics discussing what the purpose of the proxy server is. For machine learning framework, I'm using TensorFlow. Um, <clears throat> TensorFlow has different flavors, whether you can run in a GPU, CPUs, and at any point in my projects grow a lot into buying high or purchase some cloud services where I'll use TPUs um, or other uh, services. As far as computer vision, I am using OpenCV. Um, I think in the open source community is the mostly widely used computer vision framework. There's There might be some other ones out there, um, like SimpleCV, but I don't think it's, it's, it's uh, continually maintained and grown or added. Um, as far as video and image and stills or activating the video on a mobile device uh, for the browser side, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a mobile application developer. My strengths are in web applications. So every uh, mobile device has a browser and the browser pretty much standardized to some extent or standardized across all devices so if I make a web application it's a lot easy, easier for me to adopt it across Windows iOS Android and you know, you know Linux they all have browsers um, so it might be some minor changes in, in the code, but it's easier for me to make changes and then still be able to use it across different devices, whether you're using a laptop, desktop, a handheld device, or a wearable device. Um, either way, I st you'll still be able to access the web, web application. If I'm more specific to an Android app, it's only going to be used in an Android device. Um, so, in order for me to use the video and the audio, I'm using WebRTC. Um, that is, I think, is the mostly used. Uh, I haven't explored any other frameworks that uses that. Uh, as far as an email server, again, I'm, I'm primarily a Windows operating system uh, user. So I'll set up HTML server, it's real simple, install, it already installs the database by itself and sets everything up for itself. Uh, you just gotta specify domain, IP addresses, um, blacklist IPs and stuff like that, um, and so forth. So as far as the server-side scripting, uh, again, uh, exam had already installs Apache, MariaDB, PHP. PHP is a server-side scripting for web applications, but you can also use, to some extent, use it for internal scripting. You know, all you have to do is schedule it and run scripts, maybe do some database optimizations and stuff like that. So I used to uh, use Perl before I used PHP, but, and then use both of them at the same time and then just focused on PHP. Then I'm going into Python. I'm not a big Python Quarter, but I'm getting there. Uh, it's easy to learn. Uh, and the reason why I'm using Python a lot is because TensorFlow and OpenCV scripts 
uh, I'll be using it a lot. OPCV does have a JavaScript API, um, which is great. WebRTC uses JavaScript because it's a browser site, right? So it's a JavaScript uh, framework where you do the lot of coding on the JavaScript site. So the browser side scripting, as I mentioned here, I use JavaScript. JavaScript, I think, is the only server side scripting that I think is being supported. And jQuery is more simplified or easier way to code, but it's also a JavaScript. Um, so these are, I think, what people call uh, technology stack. Uh, there might be other programs here that are not mentioned, and they might be hidden in the background that I may have forgotten, but if I mention them uh, and I have not discussed them, I would uh, put a note on there and remind me remind myself uh, to make a video of it. Again, I'll probably, I'm going to create, uh, not probably, but I'll, I will create a video for XAMP and how to set up, proxy, set up, uh, machine learning, uh, TensorFlow, uh, OpenCV, all that. Uh, we will go into details as well as these. As Alrighty. So, my network layout. Now, Keep in mind, this is personal use. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is personal. My projects are personal. Um, I do have an LLC um, for one of my projects. And I have to maintain some kind of security and secure the data that I do collect and process. So, but. <clears throat> On this one here at a high level, I mean, I, I use Visio to do this, and you can get a count of all the devices here in the descriptions. But again, it's how am I getting my data source for our, you know, if I, if I had like a real time now? I know I can download videos and get download images, but those are environments that I did not have control of and um, depending on on those images or videos to have the data that I need and the challenge that I have is sometimes when when somebody goes and takes an image takes a snap of snaps a picture right and gets the picture from the camera puts it into their laptop. They might put some some filters or they might clean it up before they publish it on the website. Or they might crop it. Or they might, you know, they might reduce the lighting. They might put some white balancing on it or something that affects the image. And it's not an actual true image at the point that I want to capture it, right? If that I hope that made sense. So what I'm uh, I want to do is is part of my data collection. I mean that w those will be my seeds, but my actual data collection comes from real time users going out, especially like for patriots and the way I want to I want to do this project is is individuals you know using different devices capturing an image of the, of the flags, whether it be the American or the state's flags, and then and then locks down additional information of you know location, bearing, all that stuff, and uploads it. So I can later process it and start uh, uh, using that data. So in order for me to do that, I need to set up sort of the development environment before I go full-blown production type environment. So what I have set up here, uh, if you look at diagram, this is you know just to, if you can see internet cloud, whatever the, the services have, cable service, right? And a Caribbean service to interface with that, I have a cable modem. So it'll be the internet modem. So this EU here is the end user. It could be me, it could be some of my subscribers or something like that. And if I use a camera, I'll get the micro disc and put it into the laptop and then I upload it using the, using the web interface that I have, right? So right off the bat, connected it to my internet modem. I'll have, I have a primary server and a secondary server both running, uh, a web server, Apache, and they're in sync. And then I also have a database uh, because I might I might be using uh, a CMS here that enables me 
to easily deploy uh, a user, user authentication, user sign up, uh, and then just deal with quick web pages to upload, you know, forms to upload the images, videos, or whatever I want them to upload. And I don't have to deal with all that other garbage, right? CMS uh, that I use is real simple. And of course, by using that CMS, uh, I need to set up a server, a mail server here in order for it to interact and go out to the internet and back and forth. Um, so if I want to send emails or enable my users here to send email instead of uploading, right? Maybe they're, maybe they're, they're running around and they just take a snap up picture and they send an email. It might be easier experience for them than going to the whole hassle of going to the browser or taking the picture, then going to the browser, then log in and then uh, go find the image they took and then upload it. It might be easier for them to take a picture. There'll be a, a link there that says, you know, share it and it has their email client and then they just click that and then just send it as an email, right? It's an easier workflow. So, and all that, uh, what I also have in here is a, a, a proxy. This proxy, uh, the whole purpose of the proxy is to bottleneck all the traffic that's going to the, my internet based on this entire network here. Uh, you gotta remember that this is a, a personal connection. It's high. I, I think it's like, I don't know, uh, close to 60 or 70, 70 megs download and five, me five or 10 megs upload servers that I subscribe to. But I also have a bunch of personal devices and, you know, I have so my sons and daughters, my daughter comes over here and they have their, their devices, their laptops, their, their Xbox, and they go in into their, into their computers as well. And they're playing online games, you know, same time they're playing online games, they're watching, you know, video streaming services or, you know, Twitch or whatever you have, YouTube and all that stuff, right? So... All that it has an impact if, if all my servers are running in high demand. So the proxy server kind of enables and bottlenecks all that services. The only ones that's not bottleneck are these two servers. These two servers have full servers, uploads and downloads. So this router here has a built-in firewall. And of course I do enable the ports for HTTP, HTTPS. Um, pop and SNMT, SMTP uh, services. And they go primarily to this the primary server. And again, they have a secondary, which load balance, they, they balance, load balance the, the web services. So right after that, I have my internal setup. I have a VPN router and this VPN router is has another firewall built in and all this is an internal network id so this this ip address that will come from the internet is dynamic ip address and when i when i go into into the video discussion about how do i set up xamp and make it searchable on the internet with a domain and all that stuff you're going to see how that works but after that everything else in here is an internal ip address it's not reachable by the internet so <clears throat> with another firewall was see here what I have is a VPN. I also have the port open to a specific port open here for VPN servers. So if, if I want to connect to any of my servers here and my laptop, let's say I'm at, at office or I'm in a report remote area, not away from the house. And I want to check the status of the server or something. I go and log in into my VPN built into this router. And then I can, I have access to all computers within this network here. So what that allows me also to do is uh, just do quick checks. And again, since they're all windows, I, just, I can open up um, remote desktop and interface them as if the computer was right next to me. So it's very low bandwidth and it's, 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 it's a great way of connecting to these computers. Um, and right off the bat, <clears throat> I do have three hardware, three physical servers, not servers, but desktops that act with, uh, as a server. And I have a search engine. The search engine is the one that I, 
I had mentioned in the previous uh, video, which, which is a web crawler, and it goes out. I give it all the links based on keywords uh, and also uh, URL links of websites, and it goes and searches for those keywords, and if it finds them, it kind of indexes them. It also index other keywords and and it just creates a search engine as if you were if it was working like google but it's not as big or um you know it's 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 narrow and specific to the subject that i'm focused on and then the other one was the h http uh copier website copier once you call it a web crawler so this all this server is running uh is storing all the data into this eight terabyte hard drive it's a usb again i, I opt out not to be in buying a media server i just i just purchase usb hard drives it's a lot cheaper for me and then i have two uh two other computers that i use they're running tensorflow cpu versions and also using opencv so these two uh, are my primary servers that i'll be running where it's it's running my auto labeling and will also be doing my my means of precious uh, 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 at my means average position and my uh, internet of unions the you know, reporting on my models so every model that i create i'm going to put it in here and i'm going to process it and evaluate that model to to see how it's doing and stuff like that also my auto labeling uh, will happen here so any new any new images that come in from from the internet it'll come here remember this this is a firewall and this is a subnet to this so these guys have access to all this but these guys do not have access to this so I'll be pushing and pulling from these servers pushing and pulling back and forth the images and updating right and then storing the initial data sets here for processing <clears throat> so so it'll be push it will be it will be pulling the images and then pushing saying that it got those images or delete the images they don't belong there and stuff like that and then it'll process them it'll label them and such and at its own later point i'll review the labels and then push it for training or updating the models so and that's where where i will push it to my laptop here that is you know that i'm running tensorflow gpu that that's tensorflow gpu processes the 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 training session it's way a lot faster uh it could take it could take about anywhere depending on the size of the images 10 to 12 hours if i was to run it on here it'll take 7 to 14 days <laughs> That's how faster it is and you run it on GPU. Again, it all depends. It all depends on the images. So having all these servers and all these configurations, what I have is my development workstation. And of course I might come in here as well. Any cameras that I take with me, or, you know, running some tests and stuff, I might choose to upload them. But having my desktop here, I have access to everything, right? And the other thing that I have is these virtual, I use a virtual box and I use a virtual box to run these simulations of these servers here. Or I might run, let's say I'm, up, I'm updating a script, right? So I'm, I might have repositories here for my scripts. I'll pull the scripts. And I say, okay, I want to make changes, and I update the changes to the scripts, and then I'll run it. I run the scripts on my virtual, my virtual uh, drives, so it doesn't impact any of my stuff that's ongoing, right? So, I'll run my test on my virtual environment, and if everything runs, then I'll just push it out into a production environment here, if that made sense. And then when I'm done, if I don't no longer need them, I destroy this. But I do have one that I use to clone the others. And if you guys saying, hey, well, how are you gonna get the license for Windows? Go to eBay, search Windows licenses. They are cheap. They're not that expensive. Um, 
so you d you download you, i mean you can get windows 10 pro and be able to run everything all the applications that i have in a virtual environment and, s and do all this setup on your virtual environment do a test but it's you know it, it, once you do a shared environment a virtual environment like this it's put in a load and uh of course this this pc here is my personal pcs and you know i too do watch videos while i'm coding and stuff watching movies and all that stuff so at the end again this is my wi-fi router and everybody anybody that comes to my house has access to that wi-fi uh after they game come in here and they use it so it's pretty much my setup and again it's these things are running 24 7 and they're pulling data um once the data gets done it sends me through my email sends me a notification saying hey i'm done pulling this data when i get that notification depending where i'm at i do the next step right i have a flow chart i will show you guys the flow chart is the labeling processing well now i'm going to start doing auto labeling and that's that's where I, in the next couple of videos that's where i'm going to get to with that point where i'm going to show you how to do the auto labeling all the images that I have originally got here, how I do auto the la auto labeling now. Now that I had some initial seeds of images into my model, now it's starting to auto. Are there discrepancies? Yes, there are. But the more images I introduce, the more, more and more, the more I add into there, it, the the better and the better the model will get and the detection will get. So again. Any questions? Uh, I I do not follow any comments in YouTube uh, comment areas. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on this, please go to my blog, place it there. Um, I will answer the questions there. Uh, and uh, if there's at any point in this. Uh, applications that I'm going to be talking about here uh, in the next couple of videos here uh, if you want me to go into more details let me know and then after I finish this this data source series I'll go back and revisit those and and talk a little bit more more about how I'm using those applications so it wasn't very clear but thank you for joining uh, if you like this video give a check uh, thumbs up uh if not thumbs down doesn't matter to me i'm still going to pump these video out um as much as i can so hopefully it'll help you and if you want to interact and help me out or give any suggestions and feedbacks uh do it in my blog uh, i would really really appreciate it if you sign up over there thank you so much